right, it's day 24 and we're gonna make these awesome, beautiful, and small clipboards. To start out, you'll need four things. You'll need some Mod Podge, and I got the matte style. You'll need a brand new spongy brush, a clipboard, and um, designer series paper, and you wanna use a really nice, thick brand. And I just cut this to match this clipboard. This clipboard is six by nine, so I cut my paper six by nine. I use double-sided and I just cut off a little bit of the bottom so I could flip it over. Then I measured it at the top. I'll show you. I just, I took my paper and I just measured it at the top and made a little mark. And then I came down with my cutter and I just tried it out a couple different times to see what would be the best fit. This one actually you can you can remove the clip but you know what it's just not that big of a deal to me. Okay I'm going to show you how to Mod Podge. I do a three step Mod Podge. And the first thing I do is I Mod Podge the board. I Mod Podge the board. So there's three things I do. First I Mod Podge the board and this is always tricky when you've got the clip. So just get under it the best you can. Sometimes it will actually stick. And you can go back and fix some of this. And I actually like doing this small clipboard because you can get the whole thing really fast. And I like to do it so it, I can still see the white. If you can't see the white, then it's already drying. Okay, so the first Mod Podge is going to be on the board. Okay. Then the second Mod Podge, I'm just going to move this for one second. You've got to be quick because you don't want the Mod Podge to dry too much. Then the second one I just do on the paper. And this one I get really good, these edges. And you can always go back and redo some of it. But I just like to be quick. Okay, so there's the first one. Mod Podge the board. Mod Podge the paper. Okay, the, the paper gets a little bit delicate once you Mod Podge it. So you need to be careful. And if you have the other style of clipboard, that is really cute as well. You just do that same thing. You just measure it and clip down. Okay, so now I'm going to Mod Podge the paper for the bottom and I'm going to do it on this side. And I always have a little piece of paper underneath because Mod Podge will come off, but you don't want it to ruin your table finish. You just can chip it off. Okay. Now I've got some glue on that paper, so I'm not going to put this back down. Okay, I want the spiders going up. And so there you go. Okay, now I let this dry usually for about four or five minutes. Not completely dry, but dry enough. And then I do the third step of Mod Podge, which is over the top. This is dried for just like three or four minutes, so it's not going to slide all over. And you just do a really, really thin layer. It might come out thick at first, that's fine. Then you just thin it out. And this is the marks that are going to be on it. Now, if you notice the corners right here and right here, I um, can't see that one, right there, see how they don't match up perfectly? I used to use a, I usually use a corner rounder on the paper, but this particular clipboard is not that rounded, and so it doesn't match the paper up perfect. Usually a corner rounder will, though. Okay, so you just make sure your lines look nice and pretty, and we will sand those edges. We'll sand these edges so they match perfect. Okay. And the one thing I do like to do, this can, is get these edges right up here a little bit more than anything else because that's where it will tend to curl. It's right there. Okay, now you just let that dry. This is another one that um, I'm working on. It's always great to you do these a couple at a time because you're going to throw away this 
sponge brush when you're done. After it's um, dried for a few minutes, now you can put some embellishments on it. If you wanted to put spooky at the bottom or whatever. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three-step Maj Podge one more time. And since this isn't totally dry, I'm just going to put a little, little, tiny, tiny layer. Then this is what I'm going to put on it. So I'm just going to do a thin layer of Maj Podge on that. If there's too much Maj Podge, it, it will start curling and buckling and bubbling. and So you just want to put just the right amount on. So I'm going to put a little bit on this. And I, I never cut this till I'm done because I want it to fit just perfect. I'm going to line up these circles and it's going to stick. And then I just tap it on because you don't want to spread those colors. And then I just want to tell you really quick about these, these new punches that have lots of detail in it. I'm actually going to show you how to do this because this is, this is actually tricky. Okay, you put your paper in. Push down with your full body weight. Yeah, it's tricky. And then you can line it right up and you got to push as hard as you can. Like usually you're really relaxed about using your punches. If you don't punch these really hard because of all the little details, it will absolutely get stuck. And you need to do it on a hard surface too. And it's perfect. Now, I used to like to do my punches like this so I could watch these details. You can't do it like that. It will absolutely get stuck. Okay, let me show you on this other one. So I just barely put this on and I'm noticing at the top there's a little bit of air bubbles. This happens anytime you have a little bit too much glue, the paper will start to curl. That's why you have to use really nice thick paper or you'll ruin it. You know what? Don't be afraid to get in here and get a little bit dirty and I just use my fingers and I press it down really hard and you know what I pretty much can get any air bubble to go away the only issue that I have had is when I've used an inked area and you go over it with Maj Podge again and again and you're pushing down you can actually get the ink off so whenever you have something that's inked you Maj Podge it like that just really nice and gentle. You start stroking it like that and you can actually spread that ink. Okay, so if you have any air bubbles, don't be afraid to get down and, and get your fingers a little dirty and just push down on it. And be careful because if there are some air bubbles, it's because there's um, too much Maj Podge getting it all curled up. So you just let it sit. Real quick, I'm just going to show you a little bit of layering that I've done. So I put a little tiny layer of adhesive, um, the Maj Podge down, and then I put down the black scallop, then I really scoured it, and it started to move around a little bit because it's got some underneath. Then before I put this one on, I put a lot on the back. Then I just gently put some on the top, and then I'm just going to put this last little piece on, and i got to put a lot on the back because I'm not going to be able to put very much on the top. Okay, so then you just place this down and it's going to move all over when you put your adhesive down. So what you have to do is just push it down really hard to get it to stick. Now you've got to do that final layer over the top and just really, really lightly brush it. Sometimes I just sponge, but I like to get that straight line look when it's done. Okay. Now you don't want to mess with it or that ink will smear. Alright, it's been about an hour and this is completely dried. You can see that it's pretty smooth. There were a couple air pockets and I just pushed them down really hard and you don't really need to worry about it because they'll go they'll go down. Then what I do is I just take my scissors and I just do a little tiny clip. Even though this measured perfectly you're still gonna have um, a little bit of paper off the edge. So you don't have to get super close, just get a little little clip off. And then um, I'm just going to trim down this edge the best I can. Okay, this is what it looks like with me kind of trimming around these edges the best I can. You look at it on this side and see where there's some paper that might have come over. I mean, this is good enough, that little trim right there. And then I'll show you how to make it even. Well, this one needs a little bit. 
right there. So I'll just take some scissors and just barely, barely clip that. Okay, that's going to be good enough. Okay, then I went ahead and sanded around all the edges. So all the places where it wasn't smooth, it is now basically perfect. And it really looks perfect from the front. Now I'm going to go ahead and just sponge these edges to make it even more authentic. All right, almost finished. What I did is I sponged the edges on both of these so they were sanded and then sponged. I did this one in the old olive and this one in the cherry cobbler so it would match. And then I just finished up with my topper and I just cut out a two and a half inch circle, punched that out, and then used a regular hole punch to cover this little hole. And then I adhered this all together and put on six matching ribbons. So I'm just going to show you how I did that one little part to go on the top of this. To make this, what you need to do is you ink your image and stamp it and then punch it out. And then you need two of the black ones to back it. And all you have to do is cut this exactly in half this direction. Then you just clip off these edges like this. Do it on both of them. Then for the other one, you clip this exactly in half, and then you clip off these. And these you can take a bigger chunk out because you're not going to see these at all. Just that very end point. So this is how you'd hear it. I just put a whole bunch of glue on the back of this. And then I just place it down like this and like this. You just make your border the best way you can and then you do the same thing on this side. Well, it's easier once you've got some of them glued down. And then you do this side. All right, so you get the idea. And then on the back, it's going to, you can't see, but it, there's just like a bunch of, you know, lines all over it. So what you need to do is adhere it to something else. Okay, and then this, I put the little string through, and then I tucked it around this and I just used snail adhesive to hold it back behind there on the border and then I glued the whole thing onto this. I used a regular hole punch to put this at the top and I actually kind of cheated. I did it on a white one to make sure that it matched up exactly where I'd want it. So this one did so I put this one over the top and punched it out. And then that's all you need to do and I'll show you the finished product. Put the finishing touches on this one. I just adhered this on. I put a little um, pop dot on this to keep this in place. I, pop, I did three pop dots to stick this onto this. And then I just tied these ribbons right into that hole. I did five of them. And I cut them about five inches each. So if they're a little bit thicker, I cut them a little bit longer. If they're a little bit thinner, I cut them a little bit shorter. And I tied double knots on them. And on this one, I did six different ribbons. So you can just decide how you want to do it and what looks good and which ones you want to match. And there you go.